I'm Tom Palazzola, and uh, I got here in 1960 from St. Louis to go to the Art Institute. One of the first films that I shot uh, in Chicago was Jerry's. It's a little delicatessen that's still there. Well, it's it's he's not there, and they've changed the name, but but Jerry is. Uh, he started really early there. I, I think he was there certainly in the 50s, uh, and he didn't leave till till the late 70s when he sold a, a restaurant called Jerry's Deli. Uh, and the delicatessen just happened to be right next to the film lab. Uh, and I actually got my film at the film lab. I, I used leftover film from the uh, from the TV cameraman. In other words, they'd go in with a 400-foot load of film that had a magnetic stripe on it for the sound. And uh, uh, then, actually, in a shoot, in one of their shoots, they would probably only shoot a minute or two, and they would have all this leftover film that they were not really allowed to to use. So they sold it to to people like me, who hung out uh, at Jerry's next door. Uh, so it took me a, a year to figure out that Jerry would be a really interesting subject because he yelled at all the customers, he, uh, including me, uh, and. Uh, so uh, I finally figured that out and uh, shot that little film of Jerry, and I had to restage one one scene, and that's where one of the guys that worked next door at the lab came in with a bullhorn and tried to uh, uh, shout him down. He's the only person who ever shouted Jerry Jerry down. Uh, but there are other stories about Jerry that uh, I, o I only know. I don't know if they're true. One of them is that uh, the cab drivers didn't want to be yelled at. They would send him a postcard saying, I'll be in at 12 o'clock on Friday. I want a ham and cheese on rye. Hold the mustard. Uh, but the weirdest story I, I, I heard was that somebody came in, some, somebody ordered a hamburger, and the guy, Jerry handed him the hamburger, and uh, the guy looked at it and said, I didn't want mustard on, or mayonnaise or on this hamburger, and Jerry said, fine, he didn't yell or anything, yeah, he took the hamburger and squeezed it like that until the, until it was flat, and also the mustard, the whatever was in there came came out uh, uh, and uh, handed it back to the guy. Uh, Jerry was a little skeptical of the, of the film that I made and uh, took it home and showed it to his wife, and his wife said, it's okay, uh, uh, it's fine. So uh, he was he was a great guy, a great terrific guy, Jerry Myers. We miss him. Otherwise we'd go right now all of us to Jerry's and be yelled at. Where the hell do you think you're at? But it's an unusual story. It's a one of a kind. Uh, there is no question of it. Uh, the actions toward the customer, if a customer walks in the door, you must give his order immediately. If not, sometimes I push him back out to read the menu on the outside. If it's too cold, I let him stand there, but I force him to talk. I grab him by the arm, and throw him up to the counter, wherever there's a free man open. I say now that I don't know what percentage anymore is gimmick or my own neurosis as far as having a customer wait on immediately or uh, neurotic situation. I, there's no question about it. Thank you. 15. You got it? No, you haven't. Here you are, sir. Thank you. Yes, please. Give it to me. That's the way to go. Come on with me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's the way to go. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Two, man, first. In the Army thing, I went in 
in December of uh, 41, just before war broke out. And then as a private, uh, had four years overseas, three and a half years were combat times, the second longest in the entire army. I came out with a Purple Heart and a Bronze Star. Uh, became a captain at the end of the war. Anytime you're ready, gentlemen, I got it ready. What? I don't know where he's from. Where are you from? Uh, nowhere. Nowhere. I don't know. Yes, sir. Leon, this man wants you. I was selling furniture on the road for two and a half years, and then I bought into a partnership on St. Clair, Ohio in 48. Uh, didn't have any money, so two guys put up money. One had a half of me for about three years and took half of what I made. I was working 15 hours a day, seven days a week. Finally got rid of him about three years later. He didn't want out. sticking a knife into Freddy's arm, one of those big knives. It stuck right in there. He had to have stitches in the thing. And uh, these, uh, these guys here have all been with me anywhere from, oh, I will say 10 to 22 years. One man's been with me for 27 years. Uh, this, uh, they're quite a bunch of guys. If they can take my uh, guff, it's quite something. Where you going? Can't hear you. There's a cut in there. Yours, man, you're mine. What I'd rather have you. Your daddy, here she is, Annie. Where I try to analyze why these customers come in and take my grabbing them and take my forcing them to give orders. And it's always been a case where I said, maybe they're masochists. And I realized that 90% of the people can't be masochists, so it must be something else. And I've analyzed to the point where they're very humanized when they walk in here. Whereas where they work, they are just number four or five. They're nobodies. And they come in here by my grabbing them and touching them and screaming at them, they become human beings. I think this is the secret of the thing. And it's a fact that I feel that uh, close to people. I like people. You, sir. Sir, are you way down? I would chase for a dollar. He's getting right here. The man's trying to help you. There he is, chase for a dollar. I'll move him around. What else? What else? Uh, sure, my actions have caused uh, many little situations in the store. Uh, some, in a few cases, have tried to hit me. And I ducked in time because they didn't know me. Uh, then the other people that were here would explain me to them. Uh, which, of course, as the years go on, most of these people I even know by name after 26 years in this neighborhood. I don't care how big he is. Pardon me? When you gonna... What do you have, sir? Go! <laughs> Freddie first tried with me about 19 years ago. After a year or so, by that time he was in the back room. I didn't have a black man actually making the sandwiches. Uh, I wanted him to wait on trade, but I was scared I would lose my customers. So I told Fred I would put up crackers in front of him, boxes of crackers in front of him, so they wouldn't see his hands, to show how ridiculous it is. This is supposedly a man with ideals. And then I went home that night and uh, came back the next day and I walked up to Fred and I said, how the hell did you feel about this uh, yesterday, this work? I felt like hell. And I said, I did too. I had talked to my wife about it. My wife said, you know, Jerry, you talk a big game about ideals. When it comes down to it, you don't put your money where your mouth is. So I said, I might lose a lot of customers. She said, that's your gamble. But you talk the big game, do something about it. And so we threw away the crackers and the beautiful part of it is within two, three months, the customers were asking Freddie to wait on him because he was the nicest guy in the store, uh, far nicer than I could ever be. Come in now, William, man. Come. Are you ready, sir? Yes, sir. Yeah, so is he. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right down there. Yes, sir. Right in there behind this guy here. Right behind this man here. Sir, right behind this man here. You're mine. Come with me. Right here. Yours, please. Yours, what a 